Hey guys, Tech Made Easy, and thank you so much for clicking on our video today. Well, this is a new power station made by a company called Enernova. This is the PEPS1000. Now, it's a nice size unit. It powers devices and appliances that are 1,000 watts or less. It's got wireless charging on the top, and it can actually power 12 more devices, which is nice. The battery capacity is a little under 1,200 watt hours, now, Enernova is new to the power station arena. They launched in 2021, and their products started coming out this year. Look, in this review, I will do a quick unboxing. You know me for that. We'll take a close look. We'll review specs and features. I'll provide some helpful information for new folks thinking about getting a portable power station. I'll also do some tests, and I'll give you my thoughts on what I think about the unit. So, why don't we get started? Hi, this is Al from Tech Made Easy with a really quick message. The video you're about to watch is sponsored. We received this product from the vendor. But keep in mind, we will be very honest with you as we review the product. That is very important to us. If you like our video, I sure hope you give us a thumbs up. I hope you share our video. And last, I really hope you subscribe and become a part of the family. Thank you. Let's go ahead and unbox this. And there it goes. So you get your power station. We'll review that in a moment. You get a small user manual. You get a car charging cable, which looks like it's actually got a longer cable. You get your power brick and your AC cord that plugs into the power brick. Now, the one thing you don't get is you don't get a solar charging cable. We'll go over that in a minute. All right, we'll put links in the description, but we're going to review the ports and the outlets next. So we're going to start off here in the upper left-hand corner, uh, our input section. So this is a DC input for DC charging, such as solar, etc., right up here. Now as we go down, you're going to see that there's an Anderson port. So I will put a link in the description for an Anderson MC4 solar cable. All right, they're not too bad. I think they're around $15, but you don't get one in the box. I guess they try to just keep the price down by doing that. Now, DC, as you can see here, you have a car charging outlet, so that's an output, and you also have two DC barrel plugs, 5521. Now, let's look at USB. And one thing I like is they actually have the Type-C ports on here. So they've got a 100 watt and a 27 watt. You get four USB Type-A's, two standard, and two quick charge 3.0. On the side here, you get your three AC outlets. These are 1,000 watt AC outlets. Now, if we look at the screen, let's just take a look at the screen for a minute. We'll turn on the USB, and you'll see here, by pressing the button, USB is not on. You have to hit it again, and then it'll actually show a symbol. Same thing with AC. Same thing with DC. All right, so we'll turn those two off. Now, you do get percentage on the battery, so that's helpful. And it looks like it will only show input or output but it won't show both from what I'm seeing here. I will do some testing, maybe that will change. Now I wanna take a moment and I wanna show you a couple of accessories that work with a lot of power stations. Now the reason why I like these accessories is they give you options. So for instance, let's say you're not gonna use a DC 5521 and you could use maybe another one or two of the car chargers, right? Well, there is an adapter that I love promoting. It's a very inexpensive accessory that gives you a car charger on one side covered and it plugs right in to the barrel port, as you can see there. So very easy. And instead of wasting these, you now have two more 
car charger ports. So I like that. So I will put a link in the description on that. But let's talk about USB for a minute, right? So let's say you're not going to use the USB type C and you could use, you want to have more regular USB. So they make an accessory that converts type C over to type A. So all you do, very simple, you put it in any one of the type C's and you now have an extra type A. But what if you want the opposite? What if you're a techie and you need more type C's? You only have two, right? Well, this next accessory will actually convert a type A into a type C. And all you do is put it in the port and now you've got another type C. One, two, three. So pretty nice. Now this next accessory, I'm gonna to have to turn the lights off. So I'll be right back. So the next accessory is actually a two pack of a USB light, right? And it's adjustable and it's flexible. So let me zoom out more. And I grabbed the black and the silver. They come in different colors. But, you know, what if you want to actually have a light that you can use? As you could see, we now have a light. And then you can adjust that and you can put it wherever you want, which is kind of nice. Angle it down or angle it up. And all you do is tap this to turn it on, tap it to turn it off. All right, so I'll put these accessories in the description. Now let's take a look at the top for a minute and you'll notice that it actually has a flat surface. The handle collapses. You've got a wireless charger here that's rated at 10 watts and we will test that later on and include it in the video. We also have a handle here, like I said, that collapses. And one thing that I like about the handle, and let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, is I like that it looks like it's got some nice cushion here. So if you're gonna carry this, you know, it looks like it could be helpful. It's, uh, it's got some nice rubber there. So pretty nice. Now, as we go over to the side of the unit, you'll see here that we've got ventilation. In the back, you have more ventilation and specifications. On this side, more ventilation, and you've got that black and blue design. So pretty nice. Now, one more thing I want to show you is the bottom. So as you can see, there are rubber on all four corners. If you're going to place this on a table or something, you know, it's nice because you've got that raised section with the rubber on it, so it won't scratch wood or certain surfaces you might be concerned about. So I like that. Now let's take some time and go over specifications and features. Let's start off with the cost. So MSRP on this is $1,000. I have seen this on sale. We'll put links in the description if you decide to buy it, but make sure you watch the whole review. Model number is PEP S1000. This has a 1000 watt inverter. We were not able to get the surge wattage, which I know you're gonna need. And when we do, we will put it right here for you. So look out for that. Battery capacity is 1166 watt hours. This is a lithium ion battery. It is pure sine wave. The life cycles they say is a thousand and then it goes to 80%. It can charge and discharge. So if you're gonna use this while you're charging the unit, you can actually power other devices. We'll show you that and test it a little later on in the video. Solar is currently maxed at 120 watts, uh, 12 to 30 volt, 7 amp max. So really not impressive there. It has a BMS for overcharge, overpower, over voltage, temperature, overcurrent, and short circuit. So the BMS will manage the system so it protects itself. Of course, wireless charging is 10 watts. It does come with a AC brick, as you saw earlier, and the cable. It also comes with a car charger. The weight on this is 24.6 pounds or 11.2 kilograms, and the warranty is one year. 
The next screen I'm going to bring up, you can take a look at it. You can hit pause if you want to review it. Obviously, this has 13 ways to power devices. I'll have some information on there on temperatures. So you can hit pause, but we're going to continue with the review. So if battery power stations or solar generators are new to you, then this next section is going to be important. I call it no before you make a purchase. Now let's go ahead and bring up a slide and let's go over them one at a time. Number one, what do you want to power? What appliances or devices? You need to know that. You don't want to know it last minute because you're going to make a purchase, you think you're ready, and then when the power goes out, you know, or you're bringing something to your cabin or on a trip and it just doesn't work for you and you're disappointed. So number one, what do you want to power? Appliances or devices. So an example, a refrigerator, right? I mean, if you're going to use this um, as an emergency backup, you know, refrigerator is usually a given, right? What about phones, laptops, tablets, LED lights in your home, your TV, and maybe your internet? It depends on who you are and what you need for the next couple of hours or maybe the next couple of days. And that's totally different, right? Number two, you want to look up the specifications, the wattage, the surge, or the starting wattage for the appliances that you're going to use. Look, cell phones, that's easy, right? A tablet, that's usually easy. Laptops, well, that starts to get a little bit more difficult, but not that much, especially with the unit we're talking about today. I'll give you an example. My TV uses about 140 watts consistently, but... My refrigerator, I have a new refrigerator, right? And I am going to be doing testing later on. You're going to want to see this. But my refrigerator is a 2021 refrigerator. So it uses about 40 to 60 watts in most cases. But when the compressor kicks on, it uses about 160. From what I've noticed when I've done testing. So you want to know that. And so that's a learning curve for you. But again, a very important one. I can tell you. I had a friend buy a small power station, right? Very small. And they were very disappointed that they couldn't make a cup of coffee. But guess what? Coffee makers, especially those new Keurigs, they use a thousand watts. Those little guys can't even power the device. So something to think about. Here's number three. How long will you need to power those appliances and or devices? Now, again, let's talk about emergency power backup, right? So, for instance, let's say you live in an area where once a year your power goes out for like eight hours or 10 hours. Well, there's your example. You want something that can power those devices for that 10 hours, right? So now it's number one, what devices? Number two, do I know the wattage or the startup wattage or the surge wattage to those devices? And number three, how long? Once you have all three, you are a little bit more educated into which unit you want to purchase. Let's take some time now and go over some estimated use examples. Now, in these examples, I'm referring to the power station that I've showed you today. So let's start off with a coffee maker on the top. Now, I can tell you that this power station won't power my Keurig. Let me bring up a video real quick showing you that I tried to power my Keurig and it wouldn't work. So we all need our cup of coffee in the morning, really. I don't know what I'd do without it. I just need that one cup in the morning. And... If you don't know, these coffee machines use a ton of watts. Now, sure, they make ones that, that don't, but this is a K-Supreme Plus Smart. We did a review on that. We'll put a link in the description, but it's not. I don't think it'll be able to power it because, you know, that's a 1,000 watts, and this is more than that. Well, let's turn on AC. All right, AC is ready to go. All right, and now let's go ahead and open this up. And let's close it. 
and we'll wait for a flashing light to tell us it's okay to make our cup of coffee. So if you know Keurig, we're going to hit 8 ounce. And before I hit the K, let's see if we can make a cup. I don't think it will, but why not try? There we go. 290, 775. Over 1,000 now, 1,200, 1,300. 1378, 1387, 1391. Ah, there you go. So, you know, we took a chance. We took a chance, but it's not going to have enough power for a K Supreme Plus Smart. But it will run other coffee makers. So we're back, and you saw that, right? The power station failed because it wasn't able to power that coffee maker. But really, it didn't fail. See, what happens is, is this is a 1,000-watt power station. So it's not really a fail. It's more of an education thing. That's more important. Let's talk about refrigerators. So on the screen, in the example, a 200-watt refrigerator would give you five to five and a half hours using this power station. Now, what about a small refrigerator? Let's say a 75 watt. You can get around 14 hours with a 75 watt smaller refrigerator. What about a new LCD TV, right? These TVs that are LCD, you know, they don't use a lot of power. So 150 watts, well, you could run that TV for about seven hours. What about home internet? Let's just say you have no power, but you want to power your modem and you want to power your Wi-Fi router. That'll be around 20 to 50 watts. That's going to give you about 20 hours. If we're talking 50 watts, it'll give you about um, 20 hours. So that's pretty good. What about a fan? Again, if your fan's around 60 watts, you'll get about 18 hours. LED lights? Well, a 5-watt LED light, you'll get over 200 hours. A 10-watt, over 100 hours. LED lights don't use much, as you can see by the wattage. What about a CPAP machine? So, a 43-watt CPAP machine, about 20 hours. A 60-watt, about 18 hours, right? If you got one that's about 100 and change, you're probably going to get about 9 hours out of that. I'm going to do some wireless charging now just to test that. This is the Fold 3 by Samsung. It's got a thin silicone case. So I want to see if wireless charging will work with the silicone case. So let's put that down. All right, that's working. So that's good news. All right, nice. What about the iPhone? This is a little thicker. This is a poetic case on an iPhone 14 Pro. So let's try that and see. All right, not getting anything yet. Well, it looks like I got to take the case off on the iPhone, so let's try that. There goes my uh, sweet Brooklyn here, but let's go ahead and just uh, turn the screen off for a moment, put this down, and now we're getting wireless charging. All right, so that was a little thicker case, that's why. Now with the iPhone on, it's using about 8 watts, 9 watts, and you do have to have USB on in order for wireless charging to work. Now with the Samsung, let's just check that for a minute, and uh, Samsung is using 5, 7, Eight. All right, probably about the same. It is a 10-watt wireless charger. Again, don't forget, if you do get this unit, turn on USB for wireless charging. And don't use a thick case. You might have to take the case off for wireless charging. So Brooklyn's out with me. We're going to do a solar test real quick on this uh, power station. This is an EcoFlow 110-watt solar panel. So let's try this out. Now, as I said, this uh, power station doesn't come with a solar charging cable. So I'll put this in the, in the description. This is a um, Anderson to MC4 uh, connector cable. 
So we'll put this link in the description. Um, I think it's around $15 and then you can connect your solar panel to it. As you can see, it connects right to the Anderson port, giving you the MC4. So let's go connect this and see what we get. We have the solar panel set up and we used our angle guide and it really tells us that we've got the best position. We'll put this link in the description so you could check it out. But we're getting 36 watts out of a 110 watt panel with no, you know, clouds in the sky and no obstructions. So, you know, I know I've gotten better performance out of this panel. I'm not sure if it's the power station or if it's the panel, but just wanted to share that with you. You know, it does work and we're using some cans to keep it in the angle that it needs to be in. Now, one of the features I like in power stations is you can charge the unit while discharging, right? So let's go ahead and plug this into the wall. Let the unit turn on so it's receiving power. All right, we are at 93% charged. We got about 110 watts coming in. And let's go ahead and turn on the AC outlet and see, while we're charging this, can we power or charge other devices? AC is on. We're getting power. So check that out. We are charging the unit while we are discharging a little over 400 watts. That's an important feature to have. So your power goes out and you'd like to see if that power station can run my TV, my internet, my fan, and even my refrigerator. Well, let's find out. So I just turned this on and it's not receiving any wattage. I'm going to turn the air AC on. And uh, again, no wattage. Let's plug in First of all, the TV and the internet and all that. Now, don't forget, I just unplugged it. So the lights turned on on the back of the TV and my devices have to restart. All right. So I've got security cameras. I've got my internet. Um, I've got my Roku and uh, the, t the TV I'll turn on in a moment. So far, we're using about 67 watts. And let me go ahead, turn on the TV, and then after that, I'll go ahead and plug in the refrigerator, and we'll see if it can handle it. All right, so the TV's turning on. We're using 173 watts currently. It's saying it'll run this for five hours. Let's go ahead and turn on the refrigerator. So the refrigerator is currently off. It's not being powered. We're going to plug this in and then we're going to plug it into the power station and see how much power we get. Okay, so we are using 165 watts. We're going to plug in the refrigerator now. It's going to jump up. Let's check that out and see. 172, 179, 201. 249, 250, 213. So this, you know, I had some surge wattage on the refrigerator. So we'll wait a moment, but the refrigerator is plugged in. We're at 168 watts. Now that refrigerator, just so you all know, is a new refrigerator. It's a 2021 so, you know, it's already cold, so it just had to get plugged back in real quick, so it's not going to use a lot of wattage now. now this says five hours, and, uh, you know, that says, that's how long it says it will run. So you can see here, we got power to the outlet now. It's lit up, and the refrigerator is on. Let's go ahead and turn on the fan now. 
Let me turn on the fan real quick. We're going up 197 watts, 204. So look at that, we're a little over 200 watts and this thing can handle it without a problem. That's gonna go up from time to time because the refrigerator obviously will need to run and keep everything cool. It's just, it's pretty cool by now. And it's saying we're gonna get four hours. So let's go back and talk about the refrigerator for a moment. All right, it is 1.30 in the afternoon on a Sunday. And we're gonna see how long we can power this full-size refrigerator. Now, we're gonna put up an image on the right-hand side so you can see the model number and the specs of this refrigerator. Now, this refrigerator is a 2021 model. It is a very efficient refrigerator. Keep one thing in mind, okay? Um, but we're gonna go ahead, come over to the power station, and our goal is how long can this power station power this refrigerator? So we're gonna turn on AC. Let's look at the surge wattage. 44, 103, 96, 55. So it's kind of everywhere, right? We've got 100% charge on the battery. We are four hours in. A few minutes shy of four hours, right? We have 90% on the battery and we are using four watts. We'll check back. Eight hours, eight hours in, 78% pulling 112 watts currently. Not bad, eight hours? 78%, I am impressed. Good morning. We are just a little over 18 hours. We have 42% left on the battery and it's using 73 watts currently. A little over 22 hours in, we're using 69 watts and we've got 13% battery life left. 23 hours in, 6% left, about 6 watts going out. All right, so I watched this just now, and the screen turned off. It says 5%, right? It's 101 p.m. Now here's the interesting part. It is no longer supplying power to the refrigerator. So it just turned right off at the 5% mark. All right, so the total time is in the upper left-hand corner on this, but interesting, 5%, but it turns off. I'm here in the kitchen, and I want to test and see if I can get a 1,000 watts out of this thing. I don't know if I have enough to plug in, but I've got Brooklyn here, by the way. If you guys know Brooklyn, she's hanging out with me in the kitchen, right, girl? Yep. Well, I guess let's go ahead and test this and see if we can get a 1,000 watts out of it. Let's start off by plugging in one battery on our dual charger and see. So let's turn the unit on, turn on AC, plug it in. Let's see what we get. All right, so we are powering that unit. Let's see what we get. Let's see how high we can go. 168, about 200 now. 235, 260, going about 300 so far. All right, 320. So one side is using 300 and, wow, 70 watts. All right, so we are uh, 380 watts and it looks like it's going to hang out there. Let's go ahead and put another battery on for a minute and see what that does. Now we're using two chargers. 400. 500. 
600 and 700 now already. Yeah, 700. Wow. 750. Seven sixty-two. So it looks like we're hanging out around seven hundred and sixty-four watts, sixty-five watts to charge both sides. I wonder if I can plug in a heating gun. Now this is um, uh, on low and high. It's going to use different wattage, but just to test this, let's let's plug this in and put it on low and see what we get. Okay, plug that in. Let's start off on low, 800, 900, 1,060, so we're already going over, 1,100, uh, it's going to trip, it's got to trip. It's holding it for now, 1,125 watts, 1,128, ah, there you go, it had to trip, right? Why don't we take one battery off, start the unit up and then add the heating gun and see what happens. Alright, let me plug in the heating gun. I'm going to put the heating gun on low. Six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred, eight fifteen, 800-700-800-815 Okay, it's starting to slow down, so we're about 820 right now. 819. Okay, we're hanging at 819 with no issues. The unit is working fine. How can we get to 1,000 or closer? Let me try. All right, I'm going to try this one last time. So I'm going to turn the unit on. I think I can get to 1,000 watts. So this is already plugged in. So it's going to start kicking up. I'm going to go ahead and plug in this charger like we had before. Watch the wattage go up. All right, so we're going to 400 already. 600. 600. I just need about a 140 watt cushion around there. Almost 800 watts. Wow. I'll tell you. 800 and change already. Uh oh. Might be running under my cushion. All right. I'm going to plug the TV in. All right. Let's see. TV's plugged in. It is turning on. I am at 917 watts, TV's on, 935, 940, 944, ooh, did I just make it? So I got the TV on, I got this charger, and I've got this charger. Wow, okay, hey, that's the closest I got. We'll hang for a quick minute, not even a minute, and just see that it holds this and uh, there's no issue pretty good guys let's take some time and go over pros and cons now I'm going to start with the cons because I want to end on a positive note so the first con is they don't give you a solar cable so you got to go out and buy that now we're going to put a link in the description for it okay but I would have liked to see them include that Another con is that large power brick. Did you see that in the beginning when I unboxed this? That's a pretty big power brick. I really wish it was built into the uh, power station. The other con is it doesn't have an app, so I can't do firmware updates, and I can't do any kind of remote control management, right? No Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi. The next con is solar charging. I really wasn't happy with solar charging. I mean, the panel I was using was in a great angle. We had plenty of sun. And as you saw, the wattage that we received, you know, it really, it should have been at least 30% better. You know, that panel I used with other power stations, I had no issue. I got much better um, 
you know, wattage coming in from that panel. So disappointed there. I'm also disappointed that this only handles up to 120 watts of solar. Now, what about AC? That's another con. It took me almost 10 hours. I plugged this into the wall. I mean, almost 10 hours to fully charge this. Now, it only slow charges. There's nothing in between. You're talking 110 to 113 watts, and it just took a long time. Last con, I like the screen, but I'm just worried. It, it stays on all the time. It doesn't turn off. It doesn't dim. I'm just worried if you use this for days and days that you might get some screen burn in. So let's go ahead and take a moment and go over pros. So the first pro to me is it's got plenty of USB ports. So I really like that. I also like that it has two USB type C, which is becoming a new standard, right? My next pro, I like the size of the unit. I really do. It's a nice size unit for the power and the battery capacity. So I like that. I like that it has Wi-Fi charging. I like that it has a flat top. The handle just sits right in there. I like the, that it's flat. I like that it has a cushion handle, by the way. This really made a big difference as I carried this around. It really did. I love this cushion right here. You know, you, it just didn't bother me, which is cool. And the last thing is this screen, right? This screen is nice and clear. I like that it has a battery percentage as well, so you get to see the battery percentage. Now it's time for some final thoughts. Look, I really like the size and the power of the unit. I will tell you I am disappointed in the AC and the solar performance on this machine. Definitely go back and check that out if you want. I like that it has a wireless charger on top. I like that it's got plenty of USB, especially two type C's. I think $1,000, $9.99 is steep for this machine. I have seen it go on sale. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in this. Look, if I was to give it a rating from 1 to 10, I would probably say 6.5 to 7. And I got to be honest with you on that. What do you guys think about it? Post some comments below if you could. And by the way, if this video was helpful, take a moment, give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you're new to the channel, take a moment and subscribe. Join the family. We'd love to have you. Share our video if you could. And we'll also put our social media up on top so you can actually follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Thank you so, so much for watching our video. Have a great day. Hey guys, take a moment and give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. As you can see, Brooklyn, she's waving her tail for you. Take a moment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell and you'll get notified of new videos we come out with. Also, follow us and contact us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.